the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jack. I don't care if... World War II disrupted American ideas about women and what they could do. Many Americans weren't sure that women could do men's jobs in war factories. But the government convinced women to work in part by portraying such women as willing workers who kept their femininity. Even Rosie the Riveter wore lipstick and curled her hair. In 1943, baseball was seen as a man's game. Philip Wrigley, founder of the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League, wanted to be sure that fans would come to watch women play ball. So the league emphasized the players' femininity with advertisements and articles. The women wore skirts and donned makeup. They were to look like women while playing like men. The league hired beauty maven Helena Rubenstein to run a charm school for the players. She taught the young women proper hygiene, makeup, and manners to prevent any criticism that women ball players were not ladies. The charm school training was actually a Meyerhoff idea as a publicity thing. It probably was stimulated by the fact that a lot of the players emulated the walk and movement characteristics of the men's stars. And so they wanted, again, to project the image of femininity. And one of the best ways to teach that was through charm school training, like Rubenstein was very popular at, at that time period. And so they hired her and, and others later on. New players coming in may have had more manly mannerisms of movement mm -hmm. and, um, and, and that sort of thing. And they wanted to instruct them, you know, that, you know, in public, this is how you walk and act and that sort of thing. And one night, Helena Rubenstein's ladies came in. Mr. Wrigley had it in his mind that we were going to dress like ladies and look like ladies. People always had the impression that you loved sports, that you were masculine. And that used to break my heart because my mother was always so fussy making all my ladylike things. She taught us how to put on a coat, go up and down stairs, and we each got a makeup kit that was put away. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it it was good, worthwhile, it was a good thing to do. In uh, school, they taught us how to sit and how to appear in public. Because a lot of us, I wasn't, but a lot of them were girls from the farms. <laughs> and so we didn't have that, but that charm school, it was to uh, teach us how to handle yourself in public and dress proper. And when he had the charm school, they looked at me and they picked me out of that whole bunch and used me as an example because I just came up, and I wasn't the type to dress up real fancy, but they say, hey, you come up here and we're gonna use you. So they fixed my hair and fixed me all up, and, and uh, I was a little embarrassed, I was only 15. They teach you how to walk, how to sit. When you go in someone's home, they wanted you to be ladies. They want you to be ladies and play like men. That's what they wanted me to do. And we learned how to pour tea if we, you know, and how to uh, sit properly stand properly, how to walk with a uh, book on your head, straight and tall. We learned all those essential things. <laughs> we only, I think they only had the uh, charm school for one year, as I recall. But we were all so bright, we picked everything up in one year. So <laughs> she knew how to get up and how to sit down. And so I'm just mock them, you know. <laughs> come in and pow on me. <laughs> oh. And we thought it was a little ridiculous to put on eyeshadow and lipstick, put on a mask and go out and catch. You're perspiring, it's bad enough the way it is, you know, all that gear on you and stuff. We had to walk a certain way, you know, and you couldn't be a tomboyish or anything like that because you had to be a young lady, you know. And uh, so we said, oh my God, that's terrible. <laughs> Terrible or not, individual teams continued the charm school for several years. Such training played an important role in making it clear to the public that these women, as one player put it, could look like Garbo and play like Garrick. P.K. Wrigley knew the aura that the players had to give off needed to be a feminine aura, or it wasn't going to go.